Peace be to you all. Assalamu alaikum. This is Elmer Abdul Malik, physician assistant and slash associate and health educator. So today I want to talk briefly about how public policy affects uh, clinical functioning. So for those of you all who are studying to become um, healthcare providers, whether that's a nurse, PA, NP, or doctor, PT, P -O -O -T, um, whatever you're doing, you will be you will be affected by policy in some way. Whether that's the on a very the most local of levels, the uh, policy of your the hospital or, or a clinic in which you work, or broader policies mandated by your state. And I think this is an important topic because, especially because of this COVID-19 and the vaccine issue, then the Delta variant, uh, mask, mask on, mask off. You know, a lot of these issues that, that you hear about in the news. Um, you know, as one, uh, Somebody in administration told me um, that that um, about my my own medical license. Uh, there was something going on years ago, and and I said, "Listen, it's my medical license." And the person in the Department of Health administration let me know real quick. They said, "Mr. Abdul Malik, your license does not belong to you. It's it's the property of the Department of Health." <laughs> and that that put things in perspective for me because I worked really hard to get my medical license as a PA. And I have done, over the past 20 years, I've done what I feel is necessary to, uh, to protect it. You know, functioning within the guidelines of my, of my uh, license, of the rules and laws and all that. But policy is constantly changing. And it changes because you know, we're run by politicians who, you know, supposedly are public servants, but at the end of the day, they are beholden to their constituents and their donors. So if their constituents or their donors say, look, this is the issue that's important to us. So you have to, you know, address this issue and you have to force clinicians to address this issue. So the opioid uh, crisis, quote unquote. I say crisis, quote unquote, because it's been going on for years. And just in the past administration, it's been called a crisis, especially since it's a different demographic. Well, if I tell our patients who come to the hospital that want Percocet, Oxycodone, Dilaudid, Tramadol, and a fentanyl patch, I'm like, look, you can't get all of that. Maybe you can get that at the place where you came from, supposedly. You can't get it here. Because if I write for all that stuff, I'm done. The Department of Health does investigations. Hey, thank you. Does uh, yearly um, sites, uh, site visits. So they go through the, the records. They go through our records. And you see... If they see that Omar Abdul Malik, PAC, <laughs> license number PA302021, <laughs> has written for, has used his DEA number to write for a bunch of opioids. I'm in trouble. You know, I'm going to get investigated and I may lose my license or at least have it suspended or something. So that's policy. You know, so it's. That kind of segues into the issue of autonomy. I was talking to one of uh, the doctors at work who's got his, his private practice. And he said, listen, my own private practice. I got to follow OSHA regulations, DOH regulations, uh, the leasing building, whoever owns the building. I got to follow their policy. Yeah, you know, there's governing bodies that come in, they can do... They could do surprise investigations into my private practice. It's my practice. I have total autonomy as a physician. 
but I'm dictated to by policy and that can change you know a politician's goal in many cases is really to stay in office or get reelected that's their profession you know if you're a senator and you don't get reelected you're no longer a senator if you're a president and you don't get reelected you're no longer a president you can be past president but most presidents want at least two terms but um so politicians are going to do what they can to stay in office so what you have to do is just understand for those of you guys who are in school are brand new clinicians you're just coming out you just got your license and you, you know your family's congratulating you you're like wow i got that first job look at this i got my license wow or you just got your da number so now you can write for scheduled <laughs> substances <laughs> which i can tell you yeah. It's a highly overrated experience. <laughs> I can write for opioids, <laughs> narcotics. <laughs> highly overrated experience. Yeah. My goal is to get people off and stuff. Um, you, uh, you gotta just understand, you know what the what the real deal is. Now, what you can do if you don't like the policies uh, under which under which you you work um, if it's if it's local like that of your policy your hospital clinic yeah you could change <laughs> venues uh, or if it's in your state you can move there are states that are not as PA friendly as one would like uh, I think DC is a, a relatively PA friendly state yeah oh there you are <laughs> Oh yeah, don't no, no, ever wait for me. This guy's so fast. Yeah, just take a shortcut. I just, I take shortcuts because I can't keep up with you. But, um, but, uh, what did I say? Yeah, with your, with your, um, yeah, you can, you can, um, work in a state that's PA friendly, if you're a PA or doctor friendly or whatever. Uh, my suggestion is one doctor told me, says, oh, what you got to do if you don't want to be bothered with too much policy being burdened by policy, move way, way out <laughs> to a place where they really need doctors and they appreciate you. <laughs> you know, you're gonna have people trying to sue you and you know, a bunch of government people trying to dictate to you what to do. You know, they're happy that you're working where you are because there wouldn't be any clinicians. Uh, you can see a, a PA that runs his own practice way out in rural Nebraska, population 2,000 or something, it's a small town. But um, also make sure that you understand the policies in which you work. And also, you know, you can get involved, get involved in your state, your local uh, chapter, wherever it is, and get involved in the uh, APA, the American Academy of Physician Assistants, or AMA if you're a doctor, or a whatever uh, Anna American Nurses Association and then uh, you can also lobby Capitol Hill if you don't like the rules try to change them and that's that's just how it is uh, but that's how it's gonna go I don't know what, what's gonna happen with this whole COVID vaccine because it's talk of forcing people to uh, get the vaccine you know I don't know if they're gonna, <laughs> are they gonna like, somebody use that language say we gotta make people get these vaccines we gotta make it uncomfortable for them are, are you gonna make it so you can't get your driver's license renewed if you uh, don't get the vaccine I mean there's already you know, kids that can't register for school uh, teachers who aren't allowed to come back to their jobs in some states if, they, if they're not uh, vaccinated. So as now you start to see policy affecting people's lives. Nobody likes to be dictated to. But that's what policy does. For better or for worse. Anyway, I wish you guys the best of success in your positive endeavors. Oh, look at the guy. Killing me. Uh, 
Take care. Peace.